Stephen Lowe normally designs houses. Today, he'll be killing Saxons. Too easy. I have previously said I like hitting people. <laughs> but really, I'm a history buff. I'm really fascinated by it. Ever since I was a kid, I've been into this kind of thing. The Australians are part of an invading horde who've come to reenact the Battle of Hastings, when England succumbed to a pack of foreigners. We've had people from Oklahoma, Canada, Italy, France, Russia, uh, Sweden. I've met people from Sweden, Germany. Germany. Oh, yes, several Germans. And the internet helps? The internet has been great. I've been communicating with people from all over the world. In all, 1,500 armed and dangerous history buffs have come to the spot where it all happened. Their aim is to bring the past to life. The mighty Saxon children are going to attack them. Come on, push them back! Push them back to Germany! These days, the battlefield lies beneath a quiet rural village called, appropriately, Battle. Back in 1066, William the Conqueror came here with an army of Normans and slaughtered the local Saxons. Harold, the doomed Saxon king, is back to make sure they take some Normans with them. I think it's the fact that uh, I use the axe on the battlefield and uh, they wanted someone who could use the axe effectively, safely and make it look good. You know. And the moustache helped as well. You know. <laughs> well, what do you do when you're not being king of England? Oh, I'm a landscape gardener. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Has that prepared you for the role? Uh, well, I might have done, yeah. Keeps you fit, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Swinging all these uh, spades and things about, you know, axes, pickaxes and things. Yeah. His Norman nemesis, William, is, oddly enough, a New Zealander. A love of history and horses brought me here 20 years ago, and uh, for the last five years I've been working for English Heritage as their uh, cavalry consultant, putting together various cavalry shows, and uh, for that reason I suppose I was the, the natural choice to uh, command the 100 cavalry that we've put together for today. Every one of the riders, foot soldiers and archers is fanatical about getting it just right. Based on the bio tapestry which depicted the battle, the costumes are as authentic as possible, even using the original materials. Many have even braved the embarrassment they'll face at work on Monday and had 11th century haircuts. The bio tapestry shows the Normans with basically skinhead haircuts, they're shaved from about there backwards, right back to the skin. Uh, this is an Anglo-Saxon haircut according to the Bayer Tapestry. Um, it looks like a mullet. It does a bit, I must admit. I was cutting my hair and thought it does look a bit like a mullet. The moustache is correct as well. But most surprising of all is that the weapons are just as realistic. These aren't wooden replicas, they're made of authentic steel. The sword is the right weight, the right length, made out of the right materials. Um, it can actually cause some damage. You could. It's blunt, but you could certainly cause damage. I mean, you could actually kill somebody with this. They follow elaborate fighting rules to prevent real-life death. Basically, the places that you would aim for if you were trying to kill the person, they're the ones we're not allowed to go for. Obviously, the face and the neck and the elbows and things like that. Uh, you're not allowed to hit hard, so you've got very limited target areas, you know, the torso. But not everyone follows the rules and accidents do happen. We're trying out uh, uh, new systems and we both are pretty well trained so we wouldn't recommend that for the other people. So kiddies, don't do that at home. The risk of injury hasn't stopped Sarah Denniston taking advantage of one concession to the 21st century. Women can now join the battle. They did, you know, do quite a lot with 
you know, tending to the injured and all the rest of it, but not not actually fighting. <laughs> now, do the men hold back when there's a men in battle, or are you all fair game? No, you don't look very female dressed like this, and no, when you put some chain mail on as well. No, they're quite. They're um, no, it's pretty tough out there. As the battle approached, the Normans and their mercenary allies gathered at the base of the hill to prepare for attack. Can you tell me what the time is? <laughs> It's uh, 20 past two, William. Thank you. Must be time for a battle. And so, at the appointed hour, the armies marched forward to the field of battle, across the blood-soaked soil, down past the portaloos. To keep faith with history, the Normans are marching to pre-arranged victory, the Saxons to certain, if theatrical, death. At least, that's how it's supposed to go. For William, leading his troops into the first attacks, it was certainly looking like the real thing. We know what's going to happen, but nonetheless, when you're galloping up the hill, up the hill with a hundred horsemen, arrows are flying overhead, and the Saxon shield wall is in front of you, it does feel quite real. The Saxons' tactic is to maintain a wall of shields, protecting them from a rain of arrows and forcing the Normans to exhaust themselves, charging again and again up the steep hill. It is a strange sight, simulated medieval slaughter with a touch of Monty Python and a running sports commentary. Now the Saxons are trained from birth to fight in the shield wall. You do not go chasing off after your enemy. The Normans now literally charging into the attack. For a while, it really did look like the Saxons were going to hold their ground, spurred on by a partisan home crowd. The Norman invaders were roundly booed as they mounted charge after charge up the hill. The atmosphere out there is like pro wrestling. <laughs> and you're the bad guys. We are the bad guys and we love every minute of it. As the Norman cavalry rounded on the Saxons, the commentator fought his own losing battle for even-handed applause. Come on, give these Norman knights some support. Give them a round of applause, ladies, as they go in. Give them a good cheer. I'll give them this! But eventually the Saxons fell for the same trick that caught them out in 1066. When the Normans began the time-honoured tactic of running away, the Saxons broke ranks to chase and the cavalry cut them down. Some of the Saxons become overconfident. The final turning point was when King Harold went the way of the Bio Tapestry. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I have just been told that Harold has definitely been hit in the eye with an arrow. So... It was all over bar the pillaging. The Saxons were cut to pieces, their bodies piling up as William planned his next move on London. William, King by God's will! Exhausted but jubilant, the Normans marched to Lap of Honour. The Australians had come further than anyone for the fight and were feeling the effects. What, next time I'm going to be a Saxon so I can stand on top of the hill and not have to walk up at three times. Tired, very, very, very tired. Hard work? It was. Yeah, 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 yeah. That hill got steeper every single time. <laughs> but a good result. Well, just for a surprise, we won. <laughs> the defeated Saxons, risen from the dead, were philosophical. They win some, you lose some. <laughs> <laughs> Bad result, Harold. Ah, oh, well, you know. But in the replay tomorrow, we might have a better chance, you know what I mean? <laughs> And sure enough, the next day they restaged the whole battle, proving history does repeat itself again and again. 